Hi, I met Ted probably about uh, two and a half seconds ago is what it seems like, maybe two minutes ago. But he comes here as being um, someone going up against a name brand, which takes a lot in the state. Not only a name brand, but someone who I believe is the polar opposite of you on almost all votes. So this should be one of the most interesting interviews we do in the series. So what I'd like to start off with is, we're going to have plenty of time here in a very short time. We're going to have time to talk a little bit about yourself, but we're also going to have to talk a little bit about your opponent because you're running against somebody. Sure. You're running against a person who um, said his greatest claim to fame has worked in office for the past uh, however many years it's been. But he's, for six years he worked on bringing, uh, uh, well, I guess you call it gay marriage or whatever it's called. That was his big number one accomplishment. So I have to ask you, what do you want your big number one accomplishment to be after you've worked? Because I just thought six years was, and that being his big number one accomplishment was kind of a little strange. I'm not sure how it hit you in terms of serving the people of the state. So, uh, yeah, it definitely seems strange to me too, for two, two reasons. One is because it's sort of a trifling accomplishment. Um, it doesn't help me in any way. It doesn't help the majority of his constituents in any way. But two, it's not his accomplishment. The, right. the yeah, he, Massachusetts he, SJC the, right. Right, decided by judicial fiat mm -hmm. that uh, you know, they would impose a legalization of same-sex marriage mm -hmm. on us. It didn't, he didn't really have anything to do with it. What would, I mean, broadly, I guess I'll give you, I'll give you two answers if I have time. A broad idea of what you I will. would want my, my greatest accomplishment to be and then a specific. So, or I'll, I'll do in reverse order. The specific would be, I have a proposal. It's getting a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. People are excited about it. It's sort of what I'm becoming known for with the people that I, you know, the voters that I'm out there talking mm -hmm. to, to make any product that's manufactured in Massachusetts sales tax exempt. I just mm -hmm. met with a guy, a big supporter today. It's number one on your website. It's number one on my website. And, and it's really the reason why a lot of people, you, you may not know this, but a lot of people, they said to me, you're interviewing Ted? He's going to be one of the most intelligent, out of the box thinking, um, you know. And, and then they're liking you a little bit to Ronald Reagan. Okay, sorry, I have wow. all of the white who, hair. Who t saying, tell me who said this? <laughs> I want to meet these people. <laughs> I'll have you. In, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to introduce you. Yeah, they that'd say be because great. you have guts and you stand up. So people that are sitting there, um, if you own a house or if you're living in any kind of housing, uh, I want to make sure we we touch upon that topic also um, in terms of taxes and retaining your house, but. Um, yeah, so uh, go on. Tell us a bit about, the, about this taxes and make it in Massachusetts. Right, so the idea is really simple. If you, may, if you manufacture it in Massachusetts and you sell it in Massachusetts, no sales tax, mm -hmm. right? So um, just today I met with somebody who makes, uh, who makes uh, clothes, clothes dryers, wooden uh -huh. clothing hangers, right? right? Yep. It's a very simple. A lot of people use mm -hmm. them, right, especially in the summer when it gets yep. so hot. And on every one, and he's this very small corporation, mm -hmm. Right, he's ba it's basically he, he incorporated, but it's just like himself, and I think a couple of people help him. The expandable dowel type exactly, things. Exactly, expandable yep. dowel type things, and you know he has to collect a sales tax mm -hmm. on every one that he sells. It would yeah. be huge for him if he could, uh, and it would be a huge encouragement for people who are shopping to shop mm -hmm. local if he didn't have to do that. Right, right. So that's that's one. But I think that the broad thing, all right, if I could, if I could. Give your question a more broad answer because it's a very specific thing. The broad answer is I would like to see the hemorrhaging of mm -hmm. our industrial base mm -hmm. arrested at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And in my wildest dreams, I'd mm -hmm. like to see it reversed. Mm -hmm. right? I'd like to see us start bringing some of that back. Uh, because Massachusetts has been known as a manufacturing mecca. Historically, that's our legacy. right? And now when I talk to people about made in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. They say, well, what do you mean? Made in, nothing's made in Massachusetts. I could drive you from Salem, Mass. to Fitchburg, Mass. And just along that distance, show you places where there are now vacant lots uh, that used to be Sylvania plants that are now overseas. Yep. Um, various other plants to run. I can picture them in my mind's eye. There have been so many of them. People out of jobs, good jobs, good work. And it's not just manual labor, but it's also all the accountants, right. all the sub shops across the street that used to be there that aren't there anymore supporting these. Um, so go on. T tell right. us right. Well, Sylvania is, a terrific, mm -hmm. Sylvania is a terrific example, right? Because mm -hmm. what happened with Sylvania, they got, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, in Massachusetts, we can't, you know, we can't compete. This is sort of the neoconservative, mm -hmm. um, hyper-libertarian perspective mm -hmm. that is interestingly has been co-opted by the Democrats now. Mm -hmm. Now you hear Hillary Clinton 
you know, uh, echoing basically the same rhetoric, which is, well, we need to be competitive on the global economy. Mm -hmm. And the problem is with our economy is that we're not competing with the world and we mm -hmm. shouldn't be scared to compete. You know, this is something Hillary said it just the other day. She said, well, we're Americans. We shouldn't be afraid to compete. It's not about being afraid to compete. Sylvania mm -hmm. was purchased by the Funai Corporation, mm -hmm. which is a Japanese company, yeah, gone. right? Japan, mm -hmm. all right, it's not about competing because Japan has a very, very high, has one of the highest uh, costs of living of any country in the mm -hmm. world, right? So clearly it's not that Japan is cutting their costs and their mm -hmm. workers are working for a lot less than ours and that's why they were mm -hmm. able to come in and gobble up our company. Japan protects their economy, mm -hmm. right? Japan, yep. the, the, the Eastern economies, the industrial... The, the I can't sell into Japan. It's very difficult to sell into Japan. What you, you basically what, have to, uh, I'm not going to get into where, okay, I, I don't sure. mean me, I mean companies that I've worked for sure. can't sell into sure. Japan unless they establish a linkage with a local Japanese company there and have most of the stuff manufactured there. So you can kind of design it here, but it's got to be manufactured exactly, over there. Exactly, exactly. So jobs have to be, you know, like 10 here, 300 there. Right, and Korea, Korea same system. way. There's nobody yeah. buy, nobody drives an American car in mm. Korea. They're all driving Korean. They right. protect their economy. So what mm. they manage to achieve is they have a very high standard of living, mm -hmm. right? But they keep their manufacturing base there mm -hmm. so that a, a person can provide a dignified middle-class mm -hmm. life for his family mm -hmm. working a manufacturing job. We don't have that in this state anymore, and we had it within living memory. Mm -hmm. I talked to a, a woman just the other day on the campaign trail who, in her lifetime, mm -hmm. her husband uh, worked for Merrimack Mills, mm -hmm. and they had a, you know, they had a, like a picturesque, bucolic, mm -hmm. what you would dream of, you know, white picket fence yeah. and, you know, a little... Uh, those little windowsill garden boxes or whatever, everything, right? You've been at my house, okay. <laughs> you met my bride, okay. <laughs> Maybe, this was so. a different lady, I think. But the point is, he, what he was doing was, he was making things, right? Mm. They just seized, you know, uh, they just seized this huge quantity of heroin the other day out in mm. Athol, I wanna say. I don't understand why it surprises anybody mm -hmm. that in a society where we're no longer making anything, mm -hmm. we're no longer producing anything, right. Our young people are turning to heroin, to mm -hmm. opioids, to yeah. what do they have to, what are the, you know, wh where do they, what, se what sense of identity do they have? And where would they ever derive that sense of identity um, in a society where we don't, we're not creating anything anymore? I believe one of your, one of your opponents in your July 21st debate said, oh, we're a service economy. We're just going to go for service. Yeah, I'm so glad you watched I mean, my that debate. Kind Did of you like, like that debate? Oh, yeah, I was falling off the chair laughing at some points of it. <laughs> uh, you, you had uh, the big word. You called somebody a bundle of sticks. And, uh, and, oh, yeah, uh, some congressman. And, and, and the moderator. Screw that guy. Yeah, a con congressman who has about as much strength as, you know, the three little pigs, uh, the right. bundle of sticks. Yeah. And your moderator used the, the terrible word to describe. Uh, but I guess now that I, I looked it up on the, on, on, the, on the little online dictionary, and now a bundle of sticks, faggot in case you're looking for the words there, people. Uh, also something you put together, bundle with ropes to light a fire from the 1500s. So that was a little glip there for a, for a second, but we're back. Okay, so I'm sorry. We, we were chatting there for a bit. Right, well, I was about to make an announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, my interlocutor here uh, <laughs> just committed a really grievous um, cultural thought crime and used a, a homophobic transphobic, insensitive word that nobody in our modern society should even think, let alone say. So I just want to strenuously disavow his hate speech before we continue. I love this it. Is you know? not, this is, will not be tolerated. This will not be tolerated. In the brave new society no. that we're trying to build. What is wrong with you? I know. What is wrong with I'm you, just sir? terribly awful. Have I'm you no shame? After. You know what? With the newspaper, I should put it big and big, huge things. Because when we were kids, when somebody was building something and it was just crud, it's like, you know, what are you doing? That's going to fall apart like a bundle of sticks. You use the term faggot. When someone was being, you know, whatever you'd say. So when you attacked a congressman, you didn't even attack a congressman. It was Donald Trump who attacked a congressman. You said, I just made a comment. Hey, way to go. I just made a comment. And, and the comments that came back from the tolerant left. Do you want me to read a few of them? If you want. You know what? I, we, uh, we have, we, we've got only 13 minutes. Well, Talks. let's not this waste this, 13 this be, minutes. No, no, no. <laughs> this will be great. Just to give you an idea of what, you, what people are running about. You, uh, I can't read that one. Um, let me see. We'd get thrown off the air for that one. Oh, the stack is too tall. Hmm. Um, you can't read that word. Waste of skin and air. Go jump in a river and inhale deeply. <laughs> okay, you are That's kind of creative, actually. That's whatever, kind of creative. yeah. Um, oh, here's a good one. Um, don't. Oh, here's someone who says, you have my vote. Don't cater to the, I can't say that word. Um, oh, someone likens you to the Orlando shooter for using that term. Oh, wait a second. The I'm moderator in your debate used that term. 
And of course, they all came by uh, anonymous thing here. I like this one here. You have the charisma of a bag of, I can't say that word, celery, and the charm of a Burger King bathroom. Some of these are creative. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell Where you, some people guys? have uh, having a lot of time. This is this is social media, and why I don't really thrill to social Where media. Where did you very find much. this stuff? Oh, just go online. I'll give it to you. You know what? I've got a I've got a few other things here, but I'll give it all to you. You I can do, have a fun time. I do get a kick these out people, of this stuff. These people went on like crazy because uh, they're showing your tolerance. Now, meanwhile, you're running against someone who's look. You haven't run for office before. No. And you step forward mm -hmm. to run against someone who is a name brand. You okay. keep saying that. You he's, need to he's, stop he's saying been, that. He's, he, no. he's been here forever. Nobody knows who he he's is. He's voted how much with the leadership? Most, probably what, 99.7% okay. of the time? In 2012 when he ran. Oh, well, here's a good thing from your debate. He said he'd like to get big money out of politics. Right. Okay. Well, start with yourself, Jamie. <laughs> and, you know, sure. now, now, in 2012, sure. he took $93,000 into his campaign. It was funneled through the Democratic Committee here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Okay, Democrats wanted to support him, gave him $93,000. Republicans giving you $93,000? No, they never will. Either. Yeah, okay. I promise and, you. Uh, yeah, and um, what, what got me was going through his OCPF, that's the um, Office of Campaign Financial, fi uh, Office Campaign Finance, OP, well, whatever. In any case, you can look it up online, OCPF.gov, uh, Mass State, just do a Google on if you don't. I was looking at some of his contributions mm -hmm. and money from New York. Well, I don't mind having relatives in New York, but I guess they're all union people because it's the SIU down in New York. The SEIU, yeah. S SEIU, yeah. Right, I, I wrote, sure, I, he gets I, a lot of money from that. I scratched yeah. down, well, I got $26,000 uh, on, on one surprised. time that he got. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. It was 2008 when he got the $93,000. In 2012, he got $60,000 or $52,000. But Labor Council's um, SE, SEIU 32 something or other down in New York, Another one gave him uh, $3,000. Another one gave him $11,676. So how do you get the big money out of politics if you're taking money from big service unions like that? It seemed kind of it's weird a, in that it's debate. A, it's an objectively hypocritical posture. Yeah. He does it to appeal to the sort of the Tara Friedrichs wing, right? The people who... Um, the, there's, there's, a, there's a few starkly competing narratives on the left. Uh -huh. And one of the sort of fun things about uh, about looking at the modern American left is the mm -hmm. ways in which they intersect are sometimes completely mutually exclusive, mm -hmm. right? Um, a lot of these narratives are, are totally incompatible mm -hmm. if you take them as a whole. Mm -hmm. But one of them is the narrative of the fat cats versus the little guy. Right. You know, that's the citizen yep. citizens' republic and yep. our democracy is mm -hmm. being undermined by... Uh, you know, the Koch brothers. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody, none of these people ever make the allegation that our democracy is being mm -hmm. undermined by George Soros. Right. Right. Bear, bear yeah. that in mind. It's only when it's, the, it's only when they're funding the other guy mm -hmm. that it's a bad thing. And Jamie's a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. If he takes a lot of money from the teachers union or mm -hmm. from SEIU, well, that's just, you know, that's just democracy in action. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, anybody who watches this process mm -hmm. for, for as, as long as you or I have, loses their ability to be scandalized. It's not even possible anymore. It's not even possible anymore. We've been completely desensitized to the abject, bald-faced hypocrisy yeah. of Beacon Hill. Certainly I have, and I would I, imagine I, that you I, have I, as well. I, I, like I said, I was laughing watching the debate, some of the things that he was said, because, um, look, part of the idea of doing these videos is to do something a little bit different, you know, have people talk openly and candidly, mm -hmm. you know, to the audience, to us, have a little discussion. Sure. Um, so you're not going to have the kind of things you're going to have in, in a regular formal debate. How do you feel about this question? And you can't respond when, you, when, when your opponent throws a bomb at you. Oh, you know? th yeah, that was, I've never so. been in a debate either. And there were so many times where I wanted to like, where, you know. You're like, can I respond to yeah. that? <laughs> the guy just hit me over the head <laughs> right. with a lie. Right. And right. I can't respond. No, there'll be time for that later. Yeah, rules are rules. I mean, yeah. I understand. I, the yeah. moderator is a great guy. Yeah. I love oh, he was wonderful. He was terrific. But you know? it, I was like, your I wish I too. could, you know, yeah. Jamie told some huge whoppers, just yeah. ridiculous lies. Yeah. And I you're competing against two things. One is you, mm. you, you speak in turns. So you get turns to talk mm -hmm. and 
it's not always your turn. It would be rude right. if I just jumped right oh, in. I but know. then two is you have a time limit. So you're mm. watching this like little clock in the corner and it's yeah. like, okay, you've got 90 seconds to say this. So then you're in your mind, you're vigorously prioritizing. What points. is the most important thing I yeah. want people to understand mm. from this? But Jamie indicated, for example, that uh, charter schools um, that like only rich kids can go to charter oh, schools. My God, what a stereotype, huh? Well, it's just you know? it's just the uh, it's, it's just it's the, the opposite inverse of reality. Yeah, yes. exactly. Uh, you know, the <laughs> whole point of charter schools is I mean, the rich kids don't need to worry about it. Right, their they can folks, go to private school. Yeah, their folks have already sent them yeah. to a private. They school. They go to Brooks Academy. Right, exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wherever they want to go or anywhere. Right. Yep. Uh, and, and there are some terrific private schools yep. in in Massachusetts. There are some mm -hmm. great private schools in my district. Yep. Nothing against private mm -hmm. schools. Right. But this is but the point of the charter yep. school is it's for the kids whose parents mm -hmm. can't afford that. Right. It's not for the it's it's and and he made this, you know. He, he did, made a couple of ridiculous conflations. One is that charter schools are only for rich kids, or two is that right. you have to test into them, whereas most mm -hmm. charter schools, you get in on a right. lottery, right? right? So, he, so we're in the debate, we're sitting there, mm -hmm. and he's making these ridiculous mm -hmm. you know, insinuations or outright lies. Right. And I'm thinking like, okay, if I get time, I'm going to respond to this. And yeah, then, but there's only know. so much. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. you caught him on a lot. I, I, you ever watched the movie Casablanca? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, with the, uh, Humphrey Bogart. Yes. It's a great exactly. Movie. Yeah. Okay. When uh, they shut down those things, well, I'm I'm shocked. I'm shocked. There's gambling going going on here. Right. Uh, yeah. Who was it? Renault, I think. And uh, then they turns around. Oh, you're winning, sir. And he puts his hand in and he p gives him the money from from his his own winnings. The, the right, guy right. shutting it down. Yeah. And when he said take money out of politics, and I'm like thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> We're in the scene from Casablanca here, you know, because it's such a, you know, here he is taking all the money and. You know what? Casablanca not, is you know, a great. You know. This is a. Gr I just thought of this now while you were talking, but well, you know, in Casablanca, you know, mm. Peter Lorre is in that yes. movie, right? Yep. And he's this kind of like hand wringing, yep. snivelly little guy. Yep. And then Hump, you know, Bogey yep. is just like he doesn't he doesn't nope. care about anything. Yep. And Peter Lorre is always like coming him to like yep. you know, oh, you know, he's trying to kiss up and be yep. friends. And the thing that's dismayed me the most since I've started running. Mm -hmm. is the column within the Republican Party that mm -hmm. is that Peter Lorre character. Oh, wow. Picture the Democrats yeah. as bogey, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're bad guys, but they're mm -hmm. comfortable with who they are, right? They want to do bad things to you and I'll to me. I'll put more like the fat man. Okay, sure, more okay. like the fat man. Yeah. But then here comes... Yeah, here people com who haven't seen it, go watch the yeah, movie. Yeah, go watch this movie. <laughs> yeah. It's a terrific movie. I saw it for the first time when I was Plus in Ingrid living Bergman's in Maryland. Plus so, you know... It's, yeah, she is, she's so. a cutie. Um, well, not anymore. She's well, probably dead, but... Yeah. Um, but there are all these... Yeah, okay, I've I've, en I've encountered I've encountered far fewer of these people mm -hmm. than I have of people who are saying, "Hey, this is terrific. I'm excited that you're right. running." But every time I do, a little part of me always I just feel so sad because there mm -hmm. there's this there's this colony of people, right, on the Republican side who are desperate I'm just checking for the, the approval of the left, right? And yep. that movie Casablanca, they remind me of Peter Lorre in that movie. Just always like wringing their hands sucking and up. sucking up, and and yep. does Humphrey ever care yeah. about Peter nope. Lorre? No, Not he never all. respects him. Nope. You can't. And and that was that was something I tried to Spoiler explain alert, to. Spoiler alert: He dies. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, something I tried to explain to these people, especially when I got a lot of press because because of what I called that congressman. I tried to explain to people, look, apologizing to these people will mm. never get them to like you or respect Not you. At it all. will only teach them mm -hmm. that they have power over you. And they can bully you. Exactly. Constantly. Exactly. You, know? you can never you can yeah. never do that. Never ever ever. And they'll steal the language, the culture, and your finances. So, I said I want to get a little bit into the finances <laughs> Sorry, here because yeah, we've only got a little bit of time. These are really brief things. Don't change the dial. Um, I hope they're displaying his name down here someplace. Can you image right. it in? Okay, magical image, Harry Potter type image it in. Right. Like so and that, subscribe. Like and subscribe. Um, okay. This you mean unions terrific. aren't giving you from New York, aren't giving you $36,000, $26,000? You're not getting big checks from New York? Oddly, no. I got a questionnaire, <laughs> from, S I got a questionnaire from SEIU, yeah. which I filled out, and you know, I right. took it in good faith. I filled it out and gave it back to them. But the questions were ridiculous. It was like, mm. do, you, are you, do you agree that uh, detention of illegal immigrants is a backwards measure that only reduces uh, police trust in the communities? Right. Just crazy stuff like that. Well, wait a second. Time out. <laughs> who, who was the one that said it? Was it your opponent? Your other opponent? The moon bat? I'm sorry for calling her that. She was very, very sweet. But did she not say in the debate, or it could have been another debate that I was watching, at, that the biggest problem with Black Lives Matter and everything is that we should 
take the guns away from the cops because pe most people who have guns have guns because they're afraid of the police? Look, I'm sympathetic with the argument wow. that... Wow, that was an interesting comment. I'm sympathetic with the idea that there's something a little bit alarming about the militarization of police oh, oh, I understand. Right, and police forces. But to say, well, look, the problem with rampant crime in a specific mm. community is that cops have guns. Yeah. That's... that's cloud cuckoo yeah. land. And she lost my vote and I think just uh, hopefully everybody that was watching but yeah. there are a lot of people that way. You remember you are in Massachusetts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well so. that's why I, this is where I'm needed. That's why I'm you know. So I own a house <laughs> in Massachusetts here. and I'm getting on in years uh -huh. and, the, and, the, and the, there's white on the head here and um, I'd like to stay in it until the day I die. Sure. But uh, my taxes are going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Talk to me about, uh, in kind of rapid fire fashion, yeah. a little, bit, little huge, bit about here's taxes. Here's another huge inconsistency okay, with the left, right? Gentrification is this yep. horrible problem, right? When it's, uh, when it's something, when it's a problem that white hipsters mm -hmm. are creating in, uh, you know, ethnic inner cities, mm -hmm. right? Then gentrification is awful. Okay. Which is gentrification is basically just the place where you live is becoming too expensive mm. for you. That's what it means. It's well, a, it's yeah, a high pollutant. They, they basically want to throw me into some warehouse someplace. Right. For you, on the you other know? hand, the left doesn't like care what? about you. Yeah. The left doesn't care They're about like, you. If you live in the burbs, yep. or even in sort of a community that was mm -hmm. until recently kind of rural, right. working class, maybe there was a mill there. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really part of the burbs. It right. was you know bucolic working class town. Mm -hmm. uh, the left does not care about you. And, and, and I see she's giving us the one minute mark. We've got the one minute mark, Isn't so I'll make this real quick. Rather than creating, mm -hmm. you know, rather than creating cubicle, you know, mm -hmm. housing, right. this weird dystopian vision for herding seniors mm -hmm. into tiny little, you know, apartments mm -hmm. in right. these uh, mass detention centers for mm -hmm. senile delinquents, right. I would like to see uh, yeah. real tax relief, yeah. real tax relief, property mm -hmm. tax relief right. for our elderly, right, for mm -hmm. our old people. I always say that welfare has a real role in society for mm -hmm. three groups of people. Mm -hmm. the, the physically disabled, widowed mothers, and the very, very elderly. Mm -hmm. And this last group, why it's important, is they built the society we're living in. They mm -hmm. built Massachusetts. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't have this. So we really need to... That was the Reagan there. Go on. Right. So if there's anybody who we need yep. to be giving back to, it's, mm -hmm. it's our senior citizens. Right. So that's something, yeah, that's an issue that I care about. Thanks. You, you touched a nerve for me. I believe we have to wrap up in about one second. Or is that a one minute mark? She's going to give me the, my, hey, I'm old. My eyesight is only so good, okay? So candidate we've got a speech. few moments here for candidate, candidate speech. speech. So you've got about two minutes two, to I didn't, convince I'm these people wow. to, uh, why am I going to vote for you? Uh, hit, hit a little bit. You've hit a few of the issues. Sure. You're running a campaign. Go for it. And I'm looking at this camera right here. You got it. So... First of all, I want you to know this is off the cuff and from the heart. Nobody told me I was going to be giving a two-minute speech. Um, this gentleman's going to tell me when I'm out of time because I don't, I'm not good at blocking out time <laughs> and thinking that way. But what I want to ask you is this. Um, who right now is representing you on Beacon Hill? Who is advocating for your interests? You, I mean, whoever's watching this. Specifically, who is making sure that your needs are being met, that your interests are being advocated for? If you're drawing a blank on that, then welcome to the club. I'm also drawing a blank on that. My supporters are drawing a blank on that. My neighbors are drawing a blank on that. My family is drawing a blank on that. Nobody is really at, on Beacon Hill advocating for us. The dynamic that we've seen in Massachusetts is one of a two-party system in which one party attacks the working class and the other party distracts the working class. One party tries to raise our taxes, subvert our culture, uh, tell us what we can and can't do, right? And then the other party operates as a harmless safety valve for us to vent our frustration over this. We vote for Republicans, they rarely win. If they win, if they run, they don't fight. If they happen to win, they go to Beacon Hill and in no significant way challenge the leftist hegemony. I'm running to change that. And I'm willing to say things that are unpopular. I'm willing to say things that draw flack. I will draw the flack on me so that it isn't being drawn on you. That's why I'm running. I'm running for you. Website phone number. A lot of people who listen, they might not go to the website. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some place they can call. They have, you know what? They can call 978-602-2853. That's our campaign line. Okay. We'll and stick one that more on time, the magic thing here. Right. And one more time on the website, I want to hit it. It's uh, tedbusic.com. And uh, we're also on social media. We're on Facebook, which... Uh, I'm not super active on, I, to be honest, my sister runs the Facebook for us, and Twitter, which is all 100% me, I run the Twitter. 
Um, so, and I think we probably do Instagram. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Right. The so, big thing is, if someone's out there right now and you have some interest, write the name down now that you see on the screen and put it on your refrigerator. Just tape it to your refrigerator and pay attention. If you have time over the next month and a half to contrast the two candidates that are well, three candidates that are running. Sorry, I kind of discounted the one that wants to take guns away from police. <laughs> um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for being here. I loved it. All right, cool. Yeah. It was awesome.